Dear Directors General, ladies and gentlemen, dear participants, I would like to thank you for inviting the European Commission to uh, this Turkish Rural Development Symposium. I represent the Commission today and I express my personal satisfaction about uh, being with you. Looking at the topics of the symposium that you discussed already, I think that I uh, must touch upon of the communication on the long-term vision for EU's rural areas. Uh, this communication was adopted last June by the European Commission. The document is currently discussed with all EU uh, other institutions, which will take official positions. And I hope it will, that these positions will be in strong support. Of the idea of this rural communication is to will lead to stronger, connected, resilient, and prosperous rural areas in 2040. I will not develop now on the vision. It is public. It has been widely presented, and I'm sure that you are either aware of it or you would read it with interest after today's symposium. Just to mention briefly that first the European Commission will create a new rural observatory. This is because we need better and more suitable data in order to have a sound basis for our policy. Then we are working on making the rural proofing more operational for those of you who discover now, um, for, discover now this. I don't know how this term rural proofing uh, would be translated in Turkish. But it simply means that we will make the necessary so that the interests of the rural areas are taken into consideration both in the conception phase and the implementation phase of the different policies and the relevant uh, uh, legal acts, of course. The Commission accompanied its communication by a rural action plan. This is also an element I would like to share with you. It involves all the policies and which, of course, comes on top of the funds dedicated since years to the rural areas. A rural revitalization platform is also conceived, and many other symposium uh, is that we will also launch a rural pact, uh, a process and a framework where all the levels of government and all stakeholders would interact for achieving the objectives set, uh, set up by the rural vision communication. The communication on the long-term vision is addressing the rural areas of the European Union, of course, but you, our Turkish partners, can be associated in four ways. First, by participating in the Rural Pact through the European Rural Parliament. Turkey is a partner of the European Rural Parliament, and you can see in the communication that it will be one of the main bodies with which the Commission is going to cooperate. Although not exclusively, of course, but the European Rural Parliament represents a wide range of stakeholders and all good ideas and goals will be discussed with them. I would mention, for example, how to guarantee that the quality of life and the quality of services in the rural areas are comparable to those in the cities. Or, for example, how to turn the access to Internet and to the broadband cable into a basic service as water and electricity are, etc. The second way uh, you can participate is by actively um, attending the work of all the networks which are open to you. The networks will be also main partners with the Rural Pact. I'm sure there are people in this room uh, who are aware with the sometimes active participation of Turkey in the European Network for Rural Development, ENRD. And the ENRD was very instrumental in the elaboration of the long-term vision for rural areas. Almost all of its activities are open for the EPART countries, including Turkey. The third way, Turkey is a member of the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, where also almost all EU member states are members. OECD is deeply analyzing the process of the rural areas. I would only quote with you one recent excellent report, which is called Rural Wellbeing, Geography of Opportunities, which I would recommend 
Of course, I would recommend in parallel with the staff working, public staff working document, which accompanies our rural vision communication, I would recommend to you, to every expert or citizens who would like to best understand rural challenges and prospects of today. Uh, just one bracket mentioning this analysis, I would draw your attention to the aspects of the rural urban interaction and the specificity, specificity of the remote areas. The rural urban interaction is very important, in particular for those rural areas which are close to the cities. They benefit from the so-called agglomeration effect, namely the advantage to be close to markets, to services, and to job opportunities. For these types of areas, the rural-urban interaction is particularly relevant. However, this is not the same for the remote areas, which is a specific category, which practically cannot profit from the rural-urban dynamics. Those of them which are, say, more than an hour drive from a city or even further suffer from the distance penalty effect. For those areas, interaction with the cities is much less relevant. They are affected the most from the different crises and depopulate heavily. Therefore, they need special attention. And of course, my fourth point, the fourth way to participate, which is definitely more important than the previous three, is the uh, European support to Turkish rural areas through the Instrument for Pre-Accession Assistance for Rural Areas, EPART. You know, this instrument is also very praised in the Western Balkans. We consider, and by the way, your minister at uh, his opening speech addressed this, we consider that the EPART's implementation uh, is a success in the EU-Turkey cooperation and is well known and recognized by the Turkish society. EPART continued operating successfully despite the different circumstances of COVID-19 pandemic and despite of the Turkish macroeconomic situation. I would like to give you some figures, although the minister uh, in his opening remarks already mentioned some of them, I would add that the EPART 1 program, which was between 2007 and 2013, provided support to more than 11,000 investment projects in the agri-food sector and rural diversification. In EPART 2, which was between 2014 and 2020, so far the 10 calls for project proposals have been conducted with 24,400 applications submitted, 9,200 projects currently contracted, and 5,600 projects completed. So, in general, more than 10,800 young farmers and 4,400 4, women were supported under EPART 1 and EPART 2, which have created 77,000 employment opportunities. Of course, we recognize Turkey's efforts to demonstrate the highest possible value for money from EPART projects. EPART funding is not only resulting in improvement at farm and food processing level, but uh, it has also successfully promoted new and more inclusive uh, co concept in rural areas, such as first the leader approach, second encouragement of agri-environment climate operations, and third diversifying the rural economy through, for example, agritourism, but also relying on knowledge and innovation. And I will say a few words about these three uh, aspects. Leader, also underlined by your minister, uh, has, by the way, in the European uh, Union, just celebrated its 13th birthday in the EU. It is an example of people-to-people -people initiative, which mobilizes the local rural community to take care of their development, reflecting their own needs. Leader empowers all stakeholders of those areas, including women, young people, private and public actors, the social partners and the non-governmental organizations. And this is leader strength. And we are very pleased in the commission to see the great interest of Turkish rural communities in this inclusive approach. The progress in setting up and expanding the leader approach is Turkey is also promising. 
the current 50 local action groups in 12 provinces are to be expanded by adding 60 new local action groups in additional 15 provinces. So my second point about climate change and environmental sustainability, you know that the EU is paying to establish is, um, is uh, uh, underway to establish a strong policy framework in view of the enormous challenges and the opportunities uh, these uh, sustainability aspects uh, are creating. First, the European Green Deal, which pursues the twin green and digital transition, where the growth is decoupled from continuous use of natural resources. And of course, several strategies which underpin the Green Deal with the farm to fork strategy, the biodiversity strategy and the forest strategy, which are of greater relevance for rural areas and agriculture. These strategies are of huge importance. I do not have time to embark upon them in my short remarks now. Uh, I would only say that we uh, welcome Turkey's ratification of the Paris Climate Agreement and the adoption of your own Green Deal Action Plan. And that EPART has mainly uh, many, many tools to help uh, using the opportunities of the Green Deal. And my third point about knowledge of innovation, their use is key for making the rural areas attractive and for building upon modern agriculture. This is why the Commission has provided opportunities in its uh, common agricultural policy, the CAP, and in EPART framework to promote knowledge-based solutions. So saying EPART, I come to the end of my closing intervention by stressing that the last two weeks of this year uh, and 2022 are crucial when it comes to EPART 3. In fact, uh, in this very moment, and your minister also mentioned this, we in the European Commission services are assessing your draft EPART 3 program, which will provide a framework for the next seven years for the EU support to the Turkish agriculture and rural areas. I hope that the green light will be given for your program in the first trimester of 2022. And once your, your EPART um, uh, 3 program is adopted in the first trimester, the preparation for its implementation might start. This will include the signing and concluding several agreements, but I will not enter further in these technicalities, which, are, uh, which we are discussing bilaterally. It is important for you to hear now that uh, the first calls for application under the new EPART 3 program might be expected in the second half of 2022. And I stop here. I had only telegraphically mentioned some very important aspects. Of course, I have more to tell you, for example, where we are with the preparation of the CAP strategic plans in our member states. But uh, this will be for another occasion. Occasion, I hope that we will have such occasions in the future. I would like to thank you for the attention and uh, I wish you a very, very nice and healthy year 2022 to all of us, of, of you. Thank you very much again.